Hello and welcome to Potty Mouth. I'm your host, Erica Cho, and first off, I'd just like to say Happy Happy New Year! Year. Do you know what a great cure for that hangover is? What? Beer and, of course, us, Potty Mouth. We here at Potty Mouth have a shitload of surprises in store for you for 2011, so make sure you friend, like, favorite us, whatever the hell it is you do, because I don't get more wrong than this. I'm here with a sexy, seductive, and tantalizing Scarlett, an expert on life, love, and especially all things taboo. Scarlett, could you tell us a little bit about yourself? I sure can. Thanks, Erica. Hi, everybody. I'm Scarlett, and I'm your resident bad girl here at Potty Mouth and host of Everything Taboo. I'm a Canadian girl, so there's no attitude here, just a lust for life and all things sexy. I've traveled the globe and lived in all the greatest cities in North America, even overstaying my welcome in the sinfully delicious Las Vegas. But now I'm back in the greatest city in the world, New York City, and I'm here to unleash the uncensored and dirty truth. In my segment, Everything Taboo, I'll answer questions like, are you trying to get the attention of a special guy or girl in your life? Maybe handcuffs. You always wanted to try them? Just wasn't quite sure how to bring it up. Or you just want to get wild and wet in 2011. I'm your girl and I'll answer all those questions and dish out the dirty for you. So you'll have to check back with me later. In the meantime, I'm going to throw it back to Erica as she's getting set to start an interview. See you soon. And don't forget, stay sexy. Hi, I'm here with Mike Lario. You may remember him from our Christmas episode. Hey Mike, how was your Christmas? Oh, it's fan-fucking-tastic. Okay, nice. What are you doing in Times Square again? Freezing my ass off, actually. My uh, little Mike, actually, he's completely reverted up to where he used to came, where he came from. I'm freaking cold. How do you ever um, help that, the, sh- the shrinkage problem, whenever you're about to see a woman on a cold day? I have this, well, I told you the last time, if you remember. My tongue is my weapon. Do you have a, a, a name, a nickname for your tongue? No, it's called the tongue. The tongue, and that's all you need to know, that's right? That's all I need to know. That's so, all everybody needs to know. Hi, I'm here with Tanner. Tanner, where are you from? I'm originally from New Jersey. Oh, so how are you feeling about the whole Jersey Shore thing? Okay, yeah, you would bring that up. Sorry. That's a total misrepresentation of the uh, rest of the state. And I hate how, like, even people from other countries know about that show, and that's, like, all they know about New Jersey. And the truth is, those people actually get booed out of the bars when they go in. So, you know what? We don't I had like to ask. There. I had to ask. Hi, I'm here with Trina T. How are you doing? Awesome. How are you? Where are you from? Jersey. All right. We have another Jersey person here. Mm-hmm. Um, so what are you doing in Times Square today? Um, well, just enjoying the cold weather, hanging out with you chill people, man. I'm just cool. Seeing the sights and stuff like that. Did you smoke a little before you came on this interview? I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, maybe a lot. <laughs> She's, she's very relaxed. I like that. Uh, so for 2010, what was the most embarrassing thing that happened to you? Um, well, I got caught faking it once. How'd you get caught faking it? Well, I kind of like got bored with faking it and just said, stop, this sucks. <laughs> so that wasn't really embarrassing for you, but maybe for your partner, right? Yeah, I guess. I don't necessarily embarrass myself because I am who I am. Hi, what's your name, sir? Um, Josh. Hi, Josh. Where are you from? Uh, I am actually from Texas. Texas? I don't really hear that drawl. No, I still got it. No. There you go, there, there you go. go. Yeah, there <laughs> and what brings you to Times Square today? Uh, just in the city, just uh, shopping for, uh, for stuff, you know, apartment stuff, jumping like that, yeah. Is there anything like dating woes or, you know, maybe a hookup that you regretted from 2010? Uh, yeah, actually, I do. This girl calls me up at 10 o'clock at night and I come over. I pack my toothbrush and dig for the clothes for the next day, and I come over and... Uh, you got to get the hoe bag ready. I got to get the hoe bag ready, grab some, uh, grab some C's, throw them in my pocket, run out the door, go all the way up to Washington Heights. But she was just kind of like, let's do this. We had a few beers. We, we uh, ate a little bit. We just started making out on the couch, and then all of a sudden she's like, I'm ready to go to bed. And I was like, all right, let's do this. She went into the bedroom, fell asleep. I woke up the next morning. I was just kind of like, all right, that was awkward. And then she just goes, uh, do you want breakfast? I was like, yeah, sure. She goes into the kitchen, grabs a kiwi, hands it to me, and tells me to get out. Awkward. That just sounds really awkward. And yeah. that, you never talked to her again? We never talked again. Do you make New Year's resolutions? I feel like you should constantly try to be bettering yourself. So, I mean, making a New Year's resolution is just kind of silly. 
You have no willpower, Tanner. No willpower. No, that's the thing. I have complete willpower. It's the people who think they're going to change just because they make a resolution that are wrong. So you hate the people who go to gym on January 2nd and basically stop going by January 5th? Yeah, that's pathetic. Really. Yeah. Are you making any New Year's resolutions? I don't I don't necessarily resolve to do anything. Sometimes I just set forth a goal, and I really haven't clearly thought it through yet. First resolution is, is I'm gonna try my damnedest, not this year, is not to get an STD. It's real important this year. I'm gonna really try. It has it been an issue in other years? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you think I look like this, you know, if I didn't have one of that conditioning? Now, for 2011, what celebrities do you think are gonna fuck it up? And can I tell a joke? Yes, please. He asked joke. about celebrities. Glenn Beck is walking down the street one day, and he goes into a butcher shop. And he says to the guy behind the counter, he says, "Give me that salami in the window." The guy comes around the counter, he takes it, and he walks over to the slicer. And Beck starts screaming, "What the hell are you doing?" He says, "I'm slicing it up for you." He says, "What do you think my ass is a slot machine?" So. For next year in 2011, which celebrity, which celebrity do you think is gonna mess up? Taylor Swift. Actually, I have no idea. I don't follow celebrity gossip. That's just the first name that came to mind. So Taylor Swift is the first <laughs> name that came to mind when you thought of someone who's gonna mess up. She's like America's sweetheart, Tanner. Well, yeah, that's why it would be so amazing if you know, so ironic if she did mess up. I see. Which celebrity do you think is going to mess up big time in 2011? Can Chuck Sheen go again for like another year? Because he's already done so well this year. I'm pretty sure he might just do it again in 2011. So Charlie Sheen, and he might do it. Who knows? The one who was with a prostitute, maybe not a prostitute slash porn star, yeah. maybe not a porn star, and then she was in the bathroom I'm, or the closet. Yeah, I think so. I think like he can probably one up himself this year. Like I'm thinking like, I don't know, high speed chase on the city, on the road, some type of interstate shootout. Something like that. Something to really make Martin just really, really happy and smile. So. Well, the crazier the things that he does, the better his ratings get on his show. It's really, yeah, that's weird, man. Like, like, it's, it's people are just so fucking stupid. It's like, yeah, like he's 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 done it with tons of prostitutes. This really, sh this show's great. It's wholesome. Fat kids on it. He makes jokes about himself. Let's give that guy twelve million dollars a show. He's kind of a god. He, he kind of is. You know what? I admire him, actually. To be able to have that much fun and still be paid $12 million a show, God bless him. That's all I got to say. God bless you, Chuck Sheen. God bless you. <laughs> so, Josh, has anyone ever told you that you look like a celebrity? Wesley Snipes. But, oh um, no, no. They, they actually say I, I look like Christian Slater a little bit. So oh, I my go, uh, God. You totally do. You look like you would punch a woman in the stomach in the next moment. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I have done a movie with John Travolta. Awesome. Yeah. Do you think it's possible for any, you know, rich sports athlete to kind of, you know, keep faithful, stay faithful? Fuck no. It's impossible. If you do, you're either a saint or a Mormon, one or the other. I agree. What is taint? Taint? In my day, it was, you used to call it like a six pack because you carried it like a six pack. You put the thumb in here and you put the, you know, like, yeah. right? No? I'm learning so much from you. I know you're gonna. Oh, believe me, you don't know how much you're gonna learn from me. But in a in a partner, in a what partner, what do you look for? They have to have me, like laughing. They have to understand my independence. So my God, they have to throw it down in the sack, you know? Oh shit! Mm -hmm. That's what Trina T said. <laughs> now, in terms of like in the sack, has there been anything that's disgusting that's ever happened to you, or weird request in bed? Oh my God, I remember. <laughs> Oh my god, a long time ago, this guy, he wanted me to like put my legs around his neck and hold his head tight. He had some fetish with that. He wanted to wrestle with you? It, it wasn't even that. He just liked his, my legs around his neck. <laughs> but it, it got him going? Yeah, man. I guess he got off on it. I don't know. That was a long time ago. <laughs> Are you into really kinky things, Trinity? No, I'm not kinky. I just like a lot of sex. Just a lot. It doesn't matter what kind. Yeah, You're not, you lots don't... of positions, lots of positions, lots of sex, lots of fun in bed. Whoa, that's it from Trina T. I mean, would you sleep with her? The thing is, it's like this. You can tell me. I it's love so, the form of. A, I love the form of a woman. I think I find women so beautiful. But the thing is, I have a problem with. I don't think I can ever get that close to that open face. Reuben sandwich, you know, it's kind of. I, I can't do you it. You do what I did the first time. You just close your eyes and go for it. Just, just go for it. 
Okay. Just go for I, it. I, I need your, yeah, I'm going to need your advice. I'll tell you what, need if your... you want, I'll be there for you. Thank you so much. You know what? You are like that, Uncle, because you give me guidance and everything that's important in the well, world. Thank I you take so care much, of, I Uncle take, Mike. I thank you for joining us again for Potty Mouth. Oh, thank you very much. Thanks for having me. All well, right. Not the way I'd like, but thanks for having me. <laughs> All right, that's it for Potty Mouth for our interview with Mike Lario. Say bye. Bye. See you again, hopefully. That's it for our first segment. Still feeling like a potty mouth virgin? No worries. We'll pop that cherry in no time. Click on segment two to see what happens when we put our contestants through our dirty little potty mouth challenges. You would you like to do that? You know, I don't know. You're like my uncle. You're like my family. So I wouldn't want to see my uncle in that position. No, there's nothing wrong with a good old family romance. That's called incest, Mike. No, I'm no, from no, Georgia, no. but no, I'm just no, not no. into that. It's not incest. It is incest. It's only incest if you get caught. <laughs> 